Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're looking at creating educational games with the AI chatbot Claude. So in the past, I've shared about using AI for coding, and I even have a blog post from about a year ago with a one-hour deep dive video with loads of examples that you can check out using the link down in the description. Well, a lot has changed in the last year, so I wanted to share a great new AI tool that makes it easier than ever to create and play educational games or simulations or other interactives. So we're going to be taking a look at the new artifact window in Claude. Now, if you're not familiar with Claude, it's an AI chatbot very similar to ChatGPT and Gemini. Like those other chatbots, it does have a paid version, which I do pay for because it gives me more chats per day. But Everything I am showing you in this video can be done with the free version. So, of course, start off by creating an account at Claude.ai if you don't already have one. Then, after logging in, you want to make sure that the Artifact Window feature is turned on. Uh, to do that, just go down to the bottom corner and click on your account and go to Settings. And then just double check that where it says Enable Artifacts, that that has been turned on. And then you're ready to go ahead and start a new chat. So for my example today, I'm going to be creating a spelling game. My idea is to have it be a twist on the classic snake game, but with spelling words. Now, of course, you can have Claude create the code for whatever you want. It can be an educational game or a simulation or interactive activity. For my example, though, I'm going to start off with the following prompt. Create a standard snake game with a 20 by 20 grid that can be played in the artifact window. And we'll go ahead and submit that. So at this point, Claude is going to write the code for the snake game. And it's going to display that in this window here on the right hand side, which is the artifact window. And then on the left hand side will be our conversation. Now, the artifact window is really useful because it can do several things. If I click on the code option, I can see the actual code that it wrote for the game. If I click on the preview button, I can actually play the game. And then if I click on the publish button, that will let me publish the code so that other people can run it as well. So basically, we can use Claude to create the game, test the game, and share the game with our students so they can play it. Now, at this point, what we'll want to do is test out the game so far. Now, from time to time, it's very likely that there may be errors or things that don't quite run the way you were thinking. That is just a normal part of coding a game. So test out the game. And if something doesn't work right, just let Claude know and Claude will regenerate the code to address the issue. So let's see how our game works at the moment. Let's click restart. Looks like I can control that with the arrows. Looks good so far. And if I eat the apple, looks like I am getting bigger. Yeah, so far seems to be working okay. Um, I'll run into a wall here and see. Yep, and there it is. It ends the game. So, so far, that's working properly. Okay, so now that I have a basic working snake game, it's time to start turning it into an educational spelling game. For this, I'm going to enter a much longer prompt that specifically explains how I want the game to run. Now, it's up to you as to how much you want to ask Claude to change in one prompt. If you ask for small changes, the result may be more reliable, but you might run out of prompts for the day before you finish the game if you're on the free version. Um, if you ask for a bunch of changes instead, all in one prompt, there might be um, a bigger chance for mistakes, but you'll end up using fewer of your prompts for that day. Now for mine, I'm going to go with a very large prompt with a lot of requests uh, for changes all at once. Uh, here is what I'm going to put in. All right, so what I'm saying is excellent. Uh, now let's start to develop this into a game that can help students practice their spelling. Instead of the red square for an apple, place the four letters of the word blue in random places around the play area. 
make sure each letter is in a unique location. Uh, that is, do not put letters in the same place as other letters. Uh, after the letters are placed, do not move <laughs> the letters during the round. The player needs to use the snake to eat the four letters in the correct order to spell the word blue. If they eat a letter out of order, then the game ends just like hitting a wall or running into yourself. Um, as the player successfully eats a letter, the letter should disappear. If they eat all the letters in the word in the correct order, then the four letters are once again randomly placed around the play area for the player to eat again. The snake will continue to grow as normal with one additional segment of length for every letter eaten. All right, that's a lot of stuff, but let's see how Claude processes it. Let's go ahead and submit that. All right, and so Claude has updated the code. Here's the new version of the game. And in our conversation area, Claude has explained all of the changes that have been made. So at this point, we again need to test out the game to see if everything is working or if anything else needs to be changed. And if there's any issues, again, we can just let Claude know and Claude will regenerate the code. So let's hit restart and try this out. So it looks like now I need to eat the letters in the right order. If I can actually hit the B, there we go. Uh, I might need to slow it down a little bit. That might be one of the changes. Oh, and look at that. We did have an issue. So it went to eat the second letter, L, which that's how it should be. But instead, it said game over. Let's test it again and just make sure I didn't do something wrong there. So we'll restart again. We'll get the B and we'll get the L. Yeah, so there we go. That's a good example where something's gone wrong. So what I need to do now is just let it know that that's the problem we're seeing and ask it to fix that. All right, and we'll go ahead and let it know uh, what the issue is and see if it can fix that. All right, so we have a new version. Let's try it out and see how it works. So we'll come down here and eat the B and hopefully this time the L. Yes, it worked good. <laughs> and then we'll got to get that U. Again, I think I probably do need to slow this down a little bit, especially for younger children. Oh, let me restart. I ran into a wall there. Up, oh, hit the wall again. Hold on. <laughs> I definitely do need to slow this down a little bit. That'll probably be one of the changes I do ask it to make uh, because it is very quick. I just want to make sure that I can uh, go through this without any more errors here before we move on. Let's see if I can get the E. All right, good. <laughs> so it does seem to be working. Very good. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there. But that's the idea. Um, don't be surprised. If things don't work quite right, just tell Claude and it will regenerate it. And you can keep going back and forth. Okay, so now I'm ready to really expand the game with some more in my next prompt, which is this. So what I'm saying now is excellent. Now let's have the game choose a new word for each round from a list of words. In this case, let's have the words be red, blue, yellow, green, orange, purple, black, and white. Uh, each time the letters of a word are properly eaten, a new word should be randomly chosen from the list for the next word to eat. And we'll go ahead and submit that and see what Claude generates. All right, and now we have the latest version of the game. So once again, we can see everything that Claude did here to uh, update the game. We'll come over here and restart it and see how well we do here. So it looks like we got the word white to start with. So that's good. Let's see if it changes each time. Oh, oh we got another white with that. I mean, randomly that makes sense we're gonna sometimes get the same word twice so let's see if i can <laughs> i just keep running into the wall though yeah uh <laughs> we'll see if i can do this without dying here uh so we got black uh let's see here we'll finish off black and oh good yeah it's working and so now we're getting green okay that's that's good that is encouraging uh we'll come over here and eat those letters Okay, much, much, much better. Now we can just keep repeating this process, developing the game until we get all the options we want. Um, for example, um, 
things like maybe multiple word lists that the students could choose from or an option to change the speed, which clearly would help me. Uh, but let's just say, for example, that we're happy with this version and we want um, our students to play the game. So let's talk about how the publishing works. So at this point, what we would do is simply come down to the publish button in the bottom corner, give a click on that. That'll open up the publish artifact window. And here you just simply click publish and copy a link. And that's it. That gives you the link and that link has been copied. You can now basically just share that link with your students any way you want. You could post it in Google Classroom or Schoology or on your website or wherever. And anybody that clicks the link can play that game. So I'll just go ahead and paste it into a new tab here so you can see. And there we go. We'll click show content and there's the game. Oh, <laughs> and I'm already dying there. Okay, there we go. You get the idea. <laughs> so I definitely do need to put in that speed control, but there it is. It's working fine. Okay, excellent. So there we now have our game. <laughs> Very good. So now skipping ahead in time, I did go ahead and uh, make a whole bunch of other requests to modify the game. And here is actually the final version that I wound up with. So uh, this is the uh, the published version uh, uh, with all these new changes. And the way the game starts is now it asks you to pick a game speed. So there's fast, medium, and slow. And I had to use these uh, cute little emojis to help. I think I'm okay on medium. <laughs> we'll do that. After you choose that, then um, we choose word category. So I asked it to you know include all these different word categories. So colors, animals, fruits, vegetables, numbers body parts, weather, actions, transportation, classroom. I'll just do vegetables as an example. And as soon as you do that, now the game gets started. So we've got uh, the word bean to start with. And so we'll go through here and eat the letters for the word bean. And now we get the word carrot. <laughs> so the idea behind this, I just think it's, I mean, on one hand, it's a fun game. You know, it's a snake type of a game. But at the same time, um, if a student does need to know these words, they are getting exposed to them over and over and over again as they're playing the game. They're seeing the letters in the correct order and it can really help to reinforce that. Um, I'll just end that, there you go. And of course you hit play again, then you just choose again, you know, slow, medium, fast, and you pick again the um, category that you want to play and boom, it would now take off in that new category. Now, if you would like to test out my spelling snake game, the link, this published link to the game is in the description below this video. And if you create something with Claude, please send me the link so I can try out what you have created as well. I'm really excited to see what you do with this. And for all my other resources, check out my blog at controlaltachieve.com. And to connect with me, go to bit.ly slash CAA-connect, where you'll find all of my social media links, email, newsletter, and more.